um, can my head move? Yeah, oh, yeah. And I can go like this? Yeah. I can uh -huh. just Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Uh, okay. Where do you see it going in the future? Is there any place that you'd like it to get to in the future? Uh, I'd like it just to be able to uh, afford us uh, a decent living, you know. Um, what I've always wanted from the space, and um, I believe Emily would agree, is to have a, a just a base in the city, you know, a studio base where we can make things here. We maybe we can invite other artists to work with us, uh, where we have gallery shows, um, where we have events, uh, and where we where we create our art from, you know. Um, it's kind of arrived, you know, just where we're sitting right now is a, a, the back back room, which uh, has never been open to anyone. I've never sat here with somebody else. So this is a, this is a first. Very cool. Um, I feel honored. You, you, <laughs> you should be, we, there was like literally four days ago where I'm sitting was piles of crap. So we've liberated the space mm -hmm. and uh, now must maintain this liberation. Um, so, yeah, it's, but you know, if life takes us uh, in, on a different path, if em Emily wants to become an herbalist and I want to become, a, you know, whatever, an art therapist, well, we could do it from here, you know? So the space is mutable, just like our life paths mm -hmm. might take us places that we can't mm -hmm. expect right now, you know? So How'd you meet Emily? I met Emily at a, an artist residency in Banff. Banff, the, places that, the place that destroys lives and creates new ones. Um, we met there as artists. It was a fantastic uh, group of people. It was a, uh, a thematic residency on text and image. So I was the token cartoonist. I did other things. Um, we met there. Neither of us were available. Um, we kept in contact and I re-met her a year later when I had an art show in Vancouver where she was living at the time. Um, but it was in Banff also where I kind of was able to consolidate or amalgamate my various artistic practices and see it as one behavior instead of, I, I do this and I do that and I don't know how to put it together, you know, like I collect dried avocado seeds, but I also draw pictures of bunnies and, and I make collage and I do uh, photocopy manipulations and, and I do this and this and this. And I always thought, you know, I was confused because of all these little fragments, I didn't know how to, to join them. And uh, some visiting curators helped me out because they would go into everybody's studio. And one guy said, um, this is, your work is about accumulation. And, and that's true because I also collect my art. Like I sell it off and I get rid of it and I give it away and whatnot. But I also have boxes of scraps and I, you know, separate them in different categories and these are photocopies, these are first generation photocopies and this is my rock posters over here and this is my visual poetry over there and these are my collages and this is my color work and this is work on cardboard and I have it all and this is my objects and stuff like this. So I always collect that stuff. Uh, like Emily said a little while ago though, she says like, what are you saving all this stuff for? Like what future historian is going to benefit from this? Um, so it is a kind of ego, an ego check, like what am I doing, you know, like I'm saving all this stuff as if it's gold, but being in the business of collecting other people's stuff, you realize that it doesn't always fall where you want it to fall. Why, what am I doing with photo albums of families from the 1930s, you know, isn't there some punk rock niece or granddaughter that wants this stuff? Um, and sometimes no, there isn't. So. Um, my experience in the store has definitely informed my behavior as an artist, as a collector. Uh, I've got to be realistic about what I'm doing with all this stuff. Um, you can't keep photocopies of the photocopy of the photocopy and classify it. It's ridiculous. So I am in the process of organizing my own scraps and seeing if I could turn them into like a, a book or an art show or there, yeah, done. Now I don't have to, it's been scanned. It's okay. I could let it go in a different way or sell it off or whatever or donate it to a, to a body. Um, what sort of difficulties have you run into? What do you mean? I imagine it hasn't been all like, uh, what's wrong with the roses and sunshine every day? No, some, uh, difficulties in terms of being an artist? You can interpret it as you wish. Uh, I'd say that my main difficulty is procrastination. 
Um, and uh, that manifests in so many different ways, whether it's uh, uh, occasional bouts of poor diet or occasional bouts of no exercise at all or something like this, or leaving a project at the last minute. Um, so there's, there's procrastination. There's also this haunting... Uh, remark in a grade six report card that was, uh, Billy does not live up to his potential. Um, I think we all got one of those. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, mine stuck with me. Uh, I remember a friend, Josh Bizonski, uh, who wrote for The Mirror for many years, and uh, I believe he's, a, uh, he's practicing law in Toronto, said to me, he in, in university, came very enthusiastically, and he's like, I just saw Malcolm X, Billy, uh, the movie, and uh, you remind me so much of Malcolm X without the purpose. Uh, and I'm like, that's great. I have all this enthusiasm that kind of disperses in these little moments. And I create a little magical thing and then off it goes and then another, another one. So, uh, you know, it just might be that I'm a performance artist, a long range performance artist and I don't know it. <laughs> or, um, a character, you know? Oh, he's just one of those characters, and maybe when I'm older and I'm able to just wear the hood, the hooded cloak and stand on the street corner with my staff, it might be, and scare the teenagers, maybe that'll, that'll be the culmination of all my, uh, um, my hard efforts. Uh, uh, art problems have been, I can't really complain. I have a lot, I get a lot of attention for what I do. Uh, the store gets nice write-ups fairly regularly. Um, I enjoy participating and dialoguing with uh, the internets and uh, the newspapers and all that stuff. Um, I love talking to young artists. Um, I love sharing my experience. Sometimes I think I give, a, give it away for free. Um, that's okay. There's a, part of that is, you know, it's necessary because I do have my politics that must be honored. Um, uh, like anybody else, yes, a more concrete living would I'd like to make one from, let's say, my art, but I do have to be honest that I haven't really gone for that, you know. Um, so one can't complain that he doesn't get a government grant if one does not fill out the application form. Like one cannot complain about a government if they did not vote for the government or didn't vote at all, I should say. Um, so I've got to be wary of that and and real. I, I had a, a moment of you know February comes around every year and February March could be a zone of feeling bad about oneself in Montreal. Uh, so I was acutely aware that I was being flooded by bitterness and jealousy and negative emotions and, you know, you know, thinking some younger artists are doing this and that or whatever. And I'm just like, wait a minute, buddy, you're, you still think that, I still think that I deserve props for shit that I did 20 years ago. And it's like, well, it doesn't work that way. You've got to be active. You've got to maintain relevance. If you're not maintaining relevance, well, you know, bravo, you did a weird zine in 1993, you know, like, bravo, you and everybody. You know, um, so any kind of trouble should, you know, put that camera back onto my actuality and say, okay, well, what, what am I doing now? Um, I can't be, you know, trotting out some tired old uh, graphic and, and, and sending it out to the, you know, same old zines and go, what's, how come I'm not take, getting to the next level? Well, you're recycling your art, like make some new stuff. So, and, and challenge yourself a little bit more. Stay out of, you know, get out of your comfort zone, all this kind of thing. So, I think in terms of art, I've been able to, in the last few years, kind of start exercising a little bit and going, okay, try this out, do this. Um, don't rest on any perceived laurels because that's all they are is perceived, you know. Uh, it's not like, you know, I got a government uh, or a Governor General's uh, Lifetime Achievement Award, you know, when I was 20, and I'm like, we want people to remember this. It's like, no, buddy, you know, let's keep going. Um, 